September 3rd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 1 from the New Testament. From Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy my genuine child in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urged you when I was leaving for Macedonia, stay on in Ephesus to instruct certain people not to spread false teachings, nor to occupy themselves with myths and interminable genealogies. Such things promote useless speculations rather than God's redemptive plan that operates by faith. But the aim of our instruction is love that comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Some have strayed from these and turned away to empty discussion. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not understand what they are saying or the things they insist on so confidently. But we know that the law is good if someone uses it legitimately. Realizing that law is not intended for a righteous person, but for lawless and rebellious people, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who kill their fathers or mothers. For murderers, sexually immoral people, practicing homosexuals, kidnappers, liars, perjurers. In fact, for any who live contrary to sound teaching. This accords with the glorious gospel of the blessed God that was entrusted to me. I am grateful to the one who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me faithful in putting me into ministry even though I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and an arrogant man. But I was treated with mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief. And our Lord's grace was abundant, bringing faith and love in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them. But here is why I was treated with mercy so that in me as the worst, Christ Jesus could demonstrate his utmost patience as an example for those who are going to believe in him for eternal life. Now to the eternal King, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. I put this charge before you, Timothy, my child, in keeping with the prophecies once spoken about you, in order that with such encouragement you may fight the good fight. To do this, you must hold firmly to faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and so have suffered shipwreck in regard to the faith. Among these are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. God, I was reading in uh, one of the commentaries about 1 Timothy. And in these fatherly pastoral letters to Timothy. Paul covers a lot of very specific topics of things he needs Timothy to acknowledge, learn, accept, grow from. (laughs) Makes me a little bit jealous that Timothy had Paul to guide him. Sometimes, sometimes in my world, I wish I was a boy uh, and could be under discipleship training, mentorship training (laughs) in the church in that way. Um, But what is amazing is you put other ways that I learn um, into my path and other people into my path that teach me things. But in studying about 1 Timothy specifically, I came across a commentary that said, The gospel produces holiness in the lives of believers, and there is no legitimate separation between belief and behavior. Thus, those who profess faith but do not demonstrate any progress in godliness should question their spiritual state. That kind of goes back to that whole point that people love to argue, I almost said Christians, but people love to argue about, about whether you can lose your salvation or not. And it says over and over again in a variety of places in the Bible that you control the salvation God. It is in your hands. You are sovereign over that. Um, And if you choose us, you're going to see that through. People who don't make it through, um, that clearly says <laughs> that they weren't chosen in the first place by you. I think when we start to say that, or start to think that we can lose our salvation, we start to make it all about us. Um, and none of this is about us. 
It is truly all about you and glorifying you. But one of the things that is such an easy test, such an easy test to see if, if you are truly saved, if you have truly given your life over to you, God, and received a new heart from you, that, that life will change. Now, I had somebody in my life for a while who, <laughs> who faked that change. Uh, but interestingly enough, when people weren't watching that same change of heart, when he thought people weren't watching, that same change of heart wasn't apparent. That when we receive this new heart from you that is filled with your love, filled with your grace, filled with your mercy, and <laughs> thankfully filled with your forgiveness, there is no way for it not to overspill into the rest of us and out into our lives. We, ha we have no choice because once the gospel is inside of us, once, once the Holy Spirit is living inside of us, we have no way, even if we wanted to, of stopping the outpouring of that change to happen because you've chosen us. You've chosen us to live eternally with you. You've chosen us from from being jailed, from, from being locked away, from creating our own prison, and you set us free. Because of that change, that new heart that you gave us, we should see changes in our lives. Now, if you're a new Christian, obviously, sometimes those changes are a little bit slower as you get your footing. Um, I, I only know of a couple people who truly, the, the second their life changed, their heart changed from you, God, that they seem to just be automatically running down the path and in, in understanding all of this. Uh, I know for me, it took me a while to get my um, Bible legs, my, <laughs> I don't, my God legs, um, and, and kind of get a lay of the land uh, before I was off and running. But honestly, anybody can look at my life and see that I am a completely different person than who I was 10 years ago. Now the core of who I am is the same. Uh, I'm still Janelle. I still look the same. I still have the same actions. I still have a lot of the same vocabulary. Um, but my way of living, for the most part, is incredibly <laughs> different than in the past. It doesn't mean that I've stopped sinning. Um, it's just a different way of living. And so, God, I just pray for everyone who's, who's questioning their relationship with you right now. That if they are one of your chosen children, that they will be able to easily look at their life today and how they interact with you, how they interact with other people, Christian and non-Christian, um, how they interact in stressful situations, and then look at their life before they receive their heart. And is there a difference in that? Is there truly a difference in that? Um, if they can say, yes, I know that they are saved and God, I just ask that you walk alongside of them and help them understand what that path is, put people in their lives to support and encourage and teach them as they walk down the path. If they're struggling to see that change, allow them to just have a conversation with you. I know you listen to us better than anybody else does. Just allow them to have that conversation with you of God, I, I just... I want to be your child. I want a new heart. I want my life to change. I am so tired of doing X, Y, and Z all the time. It has never gotten me anywhere. In fact, it completely screws up my life over and over and over again. And I just turn all of that over to you, God. And I ask that you give me a new heart. I know that you would welcome a conversation with that. And you would also show them those opportunities that maybe their heart has already changed and they're just not seeing it clear enough. Or maybe they need to start a relationship with you and believe in your son, Jesus Christ, and incredible depth of your forgiveness. Whatever that looks like for the people who are listening to this video right now, God, I just pray for them. I know as Christians, sometimes it's hard to be on that walk, even if we've been given a new heart. You know, temptations are all around us, and uh, it's, I think, a bigger feather in Satan's cap if he goes after one of yours and can sidetrack us for a while off of what you've called us to do um, than to go after an unbeliever. An unbeliever, I suspect, is a lot easier. I know it was for me a lot easier to dissuade from, from doing anything but what Satan's bidding. God, I just ask that, that if they are Christians, that that same strength would be there for them. That same education and learning and growth in this that relationship. If they're new Christians, um, 
that you would shore them up. You would shore them up with your truth, shore them up with uh, strength that you've promised us, shore them up with a uh, surrounding community. And as we continue reading 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, we'll learn more about what that church community actually looks like and what it's there for as well. Not always exactly what people think it's there for. And then three, if, if there's people listening to this video, God, who aren't sure, who aren't sure if they are saved, if they're not saved, they're kind of sitting on the fence of what does that new heart look like, that you will show them the truth. You will show them your <laughs> gloriousness. You will show them your grace and your mercy. And with your will, God, that they will accept a relationship with your Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. How crazy awesome would that be? God, I thank you for changing my behavior, for changing my life, for giving me new ways of looking at things, new ways of handling things, so that all of my actions, all of my words, my life reflects you now. Instead of my worldly, you know, it reflects you. And that to me is the most amazing thing that I could do for you, is simply lay down my life and allow you to use it in the way that you see fit to glorify you and your kingdom. In your son's name I pray, amen.